Hello, my name is Level Friends, Sergio Gomez here, and in this episode, I'm going to have a great conversation with Daniel Maidman, and we're going to talk about should artists have fun in the studio. Welcome back to Breakfast with Sergio. Daniel, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing great, having a great time, and you are in New York City, I'm here in Chicago, and we are connected right now through social media to this thing that we call the internet. How exciting is that? It's, it's great. I've made a lot of friends that I couldn't have otherwise. Likewise. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Well, Daniel, I'm super happy to have you here in the show today because uh, I follow your post. I follow the things that you post on, on your social media as well, uh, as many artists do. And uh, the other day, you, you posted something about, uh, you know, uh, having fun as an artist, right? But not only did you say just having fun, but you actually went further and uh, talked about what does that mean, you know, to have fun. And it's not the typical idea of what might mean to have fun doing something else, like having fun playing chess, for example, or something like that. But there's a, kind of a very specific way which you frame that idea of having fun in the studio that I really love. And I said, Daniel, how about we do a show, uh, Brave How We Say Here Together, and we talk about, you know, how, what is having fun for us as artists in the studio? Mm-hmm. Sure. So, and I think that you got a lot of comments on that particular post as well, <laughs> you know. And, yeah. And that I had never heard anyone talk about that, you know, when we say, you know, it's fun, having fun in the studio. Because I think a lot of people sometimes, and main, people who may not be very familiar with artists, you know, kind of have a misunderstanding of what it is to be an artist. It's not, right. you know, a place where you go and you're always smiling and have, creating, you know, happy little trees, but there's a lot of things that happen in the studio. So maybe let's, let's start with that. Uh, can you uh, kind of rephrase uh, that comment that you made on your Facebook about having fun? That would be great. Yeah, uh, the way that I was, the, the aspect of fun that I was talking about is something that uh, my wife calls internal reward. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of uh, time and energy to uh, to get good at making artwork. Uh, you're like when you start out, you're looking at a commitment of many years, and uh, if you have any sense, then you're going to be very dissatisfied with your work for a very long time. And so, the it came up because a lot of people who are just starting out uh, ask me about the things that they should be doing, and after I tell them this or that technical thing, I say, look you also should keep track of whether you're having fun. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have fun doing this, then, uh, then first of all, why bother? And mm -hmm. second of all, you're going to be working on it for a very long time and you're gonna be miserable and you're going to run out of inspiration halfway through. Um, so uh, the, for me, like, oh, uh, having fun in the studio is one of those metrics of whether you're doing the right thing or not. Mm. Um, and there are a lot of other ways to talk about fun, but that was what I meant in that post. Okay, that's and, you know, so that process provides you with an internal reward. What my, what my wife means is you can withstand years of no shows, no support, nobody mm -hmm. likes your work, nobody's telling you nice things, uh, because the act of making it satisfies you. You have an internal reward from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, when you talk about having fun, it really doesn't have anything to do with external voices that are coming in? Not really. Um, and uh, it, uh, it has to, it, you, whether or not you were made to be an artist uh, will become apparent to you by whether or not you find it rewarding to go through this uh, very uh, difficult process of, of uh, becoming technically capable of expressing your vision. And so then you, uh, how about like, for example, when an artist is having a period of time in which uh, maybe ideas are not coming by or maybe uh you know things are in the studio are not are not happening in the way you want uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, i mean i mean an artist has its ups and downs right uh, sometimes right. you go through those seasons in which uh you know it's kind of hard to come up with the idea or maybe uh, maybe you're struggling with a certain work for a while and it just doesn't seem to get right so you know how can you what are some of the things that you have done as an artist uh that has helped you kind of uh, focus back into into this idea that we're talking about i'm in an unusual situation uh for an artist in that um, I, I have uh, like fully developed other creative fields that I'm contributing to. So I can, I can rotate through them. But, yeah. um, but if art is your one thing and you have to keep making art, my recommendation would be, and this is something that I do sometimes, 
there's a different element of fun, uh, which is not relative to you, it's relative to the work, and that's a uh, sense of playfulness. Um, mm. uh, it's very important uh, that you retain a sense of play in your work, no matter how serious the work is, because the sort of the free association that you have when you're playing, the way a little kid plays, funds your creativity. Mm. And so a good thing to do when you, when you find that you're just out of ideas, and you're out of inspiration, is you have arbitrary mechanical exercises that you do uh, with your art that are not intended to lead to good work. They're not intended to produce anything. They're just artificial constraints that you put there so that you, um, you, you have to try new things. So you could rotate through media. You could assign yourself 10 different interpretations of the same still life object. Just different, you know, uh, the, the common exercise of drawing with the wrong hand is roughly in that category. They're all stimuli to playfulness. Uh, they get you uh, out of your head and uh, and making things, and hopefully uh, you uh, while you're not while you're not paying attention to it, the problem solves itself. For example, for me, is drawing. I love drawing, but drawing just for the love of drawing, not necessarily drawing as a story or drawing as preparatory of something, but just the act of drawing. Sometimes just taking a big chunk of charcoal and mm -hmm. start laying it out, and uh, just just having fun with that. You know, in that in that case, and and not having necessarily a goal, an end goal through it, mm -hmm. just that process of uh, doing that activity, which kind of eases my mind, gets me, uh, you know, to think about other things. And, and sometimes, you know, it, through that kind of playful attitude or activity, you know, something actually may start coming up in that drawing that may lead to an idea for something else. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's often counterproductive to try to make a serious work on purpose. So anything you can do to, uh, to fool yourself uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, is often a good idea. And, and mo most of your best work will seem effortless when you're doing it. And then the stuff that you really work hard on will be crap and no one will want to look at it. Won't have <laughs> In your own experience as an artist, uh, and also you know, working with so many other artists yourself as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, w when uh, do you feel like, that you enter into that space of uh you know of, of having fun you know as, kind of as, as we are kind of uh, defining it into this episode I, it's unpredictable uh so for instance i um i had a painting that worked out really well about uh two years ago now mm -hmm. and it, it worked out so well that it basically ended a period of uh of my painting and i've sort of been at loose ends uh with what to do so okay. i focused on a novel that i'm working on for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I finished uh, the work on the novel, it's out to agents, and I'm back to um, I'm back to painting, and I found that while I, when I, I was painting the whole time, but I wasn't, it wasn't my main activity, and mm -hmm. now that I'm returning to it in a more serious way, I have all these new ideas that were just taking care of themselves in mm -hmm. the background when I was, uh, when I was distracting myself on purpose. So I mm -hmm. have a whole bunch of new paintings that I'm excited to make that, uh, that's great. I'm really excited to be back in the studio in a more serious way. To me, an art career is everything that I do, not just when I walk into the studio, right? Uh, yeah. the, the, there's, there's different aspects of the mind and the creator that are still working, that, that whatever I do here is eventually somehow is going to impact what I do over here. I think that you're unconsciously processing all the time. And when you're uh, emphasizing the activity of a different part of your brain, uh, it gives, it gives you, start, you unclench the part that makes uh, the artwork. And also you have fresh stimuli that become integrated into it. Uh, you know, uh, you open up the system more and that, uh, that, make, that makes it more um, a, a, a diversity of material to work with. Well, Daniel, before we go, I'm sure for many of our friends would love to follow what you do. Tell us where can they find you in Instagram and on Facebook. My, my name is Daniel. Last name is Maidman, M-A-I-D-M-A-N. So my Instagram is Daniel Maidman. My Facebook is Daniel Maidman. And uh, if you want to read my writing, uh, I am uh, posting to Medium. I'm writing for poetsandartists.com. And I am uh, writing for a white hot magazine of contemporary art. And before we go, one question that I always ask all my guests, a very important question. So hopefully you're ready for this. What is your favorite breakfast? Oh, man, bacon and eggs. <laughs> bacon and eggs. Can't go wrong with that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Daniel. Thanks so much, my friends, for being here with us today. And have fun in the studio. And I will see you in the next episode. Obrejo with Sergio. Goodbye.